Peggy 18. Hey everyone, I'm Brian Horton. I'm pleased to be here today representing Infinity Ward to talk a little bit more about Infinite Warfare. We had an amazing response at E3, and you guys have had a lot of questions that we'd like to address in our show today. So, with that in mind, we wanted to delve a little bit deeper into the world of Infinite Warfare, and we're going to focus specifically on the weapons and vehicles in the game. And we're going to be talking to Dan Savage and Sean Byers to do just that. Hey Dan, so as vehicle lead, can you talk to me a little bit about the philosophy you and the team went through when we were designing vehicles for Infinite Warfare? Yes, yeah, so it all came down to creating immersive experiences, making sure that vehicles really pushed the design of the game that resulted in rewarding experiences. Yeah. Uh, so without further ado, let's just hop right into it and start talking about the, uh, the tip of the spear, the largest class of the Sato fleet, the Retribution. What is, what is the Retribution? Why, why is that important to the game? So the Retribution is basically the hero ship. It's the largest member of the Sato fleet. Um, it houses you and 2,100 crewmates that you're responsible for. You as a player, Reyes, are field promoted to captain of the ship right after uh, the Geneva surprise attack by the SDF. So you're responsible for those guys, and you have the control to pick what missions to choose. Like, you're not commanding the bridge, response for these people. Do you take on the main story missions or the risky side ship assaults? Yeah, so I mean that that sounds like a brand new experience for Call of Duty, um, that you are this commander, you, you are in control of the ship, mm -hmm. but, but that's not just what the game is, right? There's still that direct Call of Duty experience. Talk to me a little bit about what it means to go from the Retribution into some of these other missions. So that's the coolest part of the Retribution that actually is a central hub, is it acts as a seamless transition point with no load screens, it's off rails, where you can be on foot uh, on ground, calling in a jackal when you're trying to attack a hill. It comes in to support you. You can hop in that jackal, off rails again, fly up into space, do an epic dogfight against the SDF skelters, take down capital ships, and come back to the red. Yeah, that sounds great. And the, the jackal itself, it seems like we got a fantastic reaction at E3 about jackals and, and the combat. In fact, a lot of people were just shocked that it was such an, a free flying uh, vehicle. And for Call of Duty, that, that seems like we're really pushing boundaries. Can you talk a little bit about what the, the Jackal is and, and how it works in this game? We're super stoked in the reaction. Like, everyone's really excited for the dogfighting. I'll just reiterate, like, because I see the Reddit posts and the tweets, like, it's not on rails. This isn't a linear one time experience. There's very open arenas where you can have full movement, take on other enemy skelters in dogfighting, or take on other capital ships of the SDF fleet. That kind of experience really pushes the boundaries creates for really rewarding gameplay loops. Can you talk to me a little bit about the philosophy about designing it? Because we talked about its function. Yeah. But, the, you know, it's a very unique look. We, we wanted to create this authenticity. What was that philosophy like? So the philosophy has always been, like we say here all the time, Navy meets NASA. So if the Jackal, you take in the functional aspect of, okay, what are these things designed like? The F-35, the F-22, real-world fighter jets. Then you have to have the aspect of going up into space. And what does it require to reach escape velocity? Well, you got to throw some rocket boosters in the back that jettison off once you reach that, uh, or escape the gravity well of a planet. Um, so you have these kind of functionalities where you have like ceramic tiles or heat shields in the bottom. These kind of things that allow this jackal to fly in atmosphere, fly in atmosphere in the VTOL mode, kind of hover, go escape velocity, tuck the wings in, get up into space when the RCS thrusters open up. That's great, yeah, because you have this sort of parity with the ground controls, right? Yeah. So when you're flying the jackal, you'll be able to strafe and go move forward just like you would on ground, but also you have this amazing forward velocity that you can't get on ground either. Exactly. And that control, like, it's just so rewarding to hop on the sticks. And like, once you give some of the sticks, if they're used to playing on ground combat, it just transitions perfectly in for the jackal. Like, up is, jump is up, your grenades, your flares, shooting is the right trigger. It's just very intuitive. Like, it takes literally seconds to figure out how to control this jackal in this open dogfighting arena. That's great. Yeah. So we've talked about the Retribution, which is this massive carrier. We've talked about the Jackal, which is your fighter jet. What about the, the Raven? What is the function of the Raven in this game? So the Raven allows us to drop off uh, crew personnel, like Marines, uh, vital equipment, and uh, other vehicles for ground combat to the different celestial bodies throughout the campaign. Yeah, because it's not just about you and your only mission. You have a crew with you that you're responsible for. And, and that, you know, you're going to be able to have that chemistry of the of your crew on, on these ships. Yeah, and it, you'll see that chemistry grow throughout the campaign and how people react to you as you're field promoted. You used to be their peer, now you're in command of them. What's that dynamic like? And how does that change how people fight alongside you and with you? And it kind of affects your uh, responsibilities overall. So we've talked about the Sato fleet, but now we have our enemy, the Settlement Defense Front. Can you talk to me a little bit about the philosophy behind those vehicles and what we did to try to counteract and give us a foil for our, our uh, heroes? Yeah, like you said, we have two fleets going head-to-head -head here. For the Jackal, there's a Skelter. For every frigate, uh, carrier, uh, destroyer, they're all equal responsible on the SDF side. 
So the retribution is a carrier class, and SDF felt like they're a little lagging behind technology, so they went balls to the wall and created the Olympus Mons, which is one step above the carrier class. It's a super carrier. It dwarfs the retribution in every capacity. They really put all their chips in this one ship. It's like a super killer. It's, yeah, it's a super carrier, super killer. Like it gets the job done, and it has the jump drives to travel across the solar system in seconds. They can kind of like sum up the, uh, the Mons. It's kind of like Jaws. Has its own ominous music. It's always hunting you throughout the game. You feel its presence. Even when it's not there, you know that they're somewhere watching and tracking your every move and retribution and when you're on the other uh, Earth or different bodies. Yeah. Um, do you feel like there's an equal match or is there like an aesthetic difference between the two uh, groups? So the total aesthetic difference. Sato Force is a bit more sleek. They have uh, technology and the history to be able to create these vehicles. They're a bit more sleek and refined, like a lower drag coefficient so they can kind of come in the atmosphere with less brute force. Or the SDF, they have the raw minerals. They're out there refining these things, and they can kind of create just these monstrosities. Like, so it's a little bit more unrefined. Very it's, unrefined. It, and, and the materials feel different. Like, yeah. you know, we really came up with a different palette, too. Yeah. So you really feel that you know, every time you see a, a skelter versus a jackal, you're, you're going to get a clear idea of the, of the silhouette difference and the materials. Absolutely. So, Dan, it's been great to talk about our philosophy about vehicles and infinite warfare. The fact that we're not only creating these multiple class of vehicles, but they really truly change the gameplay experience. So, thanks again for all the hard work you and the team have put into it. Hey, you bet. It's been a lot of fun. I can't wait to see the community's reaction to this and to see them at COD XP. All right, man. That's cool. So, I'm going to throw it over to Sean. Sean Byers, you've been um, leading up the team. Uh, probably I get more questions than anything else about tell me about the weapons in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. There's a lot of passion behind this and your team has been working tirelessly on making not only some of the highest quality weapons but also the largest cast of weapons we've ever seen. So thanks for joining and let's, let's talk about this right now. What, do you, what, are your, what are you most passionate about with weapons and just give me the general philosophy that we have. We put so much love and craft and detail into every weapon in this game from the material reads, the high carbon steel, to the plastic grips, to the chipped worn edges, to writing. The, the, the classic Call of Duty look that you know and expect is going to be in this, in this video game. That's fantastic because you know, I know you talk to me often about the legitimacy you want these weapons to feel. We're going into a future and then you had a goal to say, yes, we're going into the future, but I want people to believe that these weapons exist and they're real. How did you make that happen? Well, it was, I didn't just make that happen. It was a complete team effort of making sure that you see something on screen that's believable. We use, we use platforms of visuals that you've seen before, and, and you know and you recognize them, and we take that and we bring that to the next level. So we have, we have weapons. The, the whole philosophy behind every weapon was to be believable and real. And that goes from materials to design to how they function and they feel. You even came up with manufacturers that actually created these weapons. Talk to me a little bit about the idea of why, why would you do that? I mean, why, why is that important to come up with fake companies that make up these weapons? Right. I, I think great design comes from a full thought process of everything that is, uh, goes into something in real life. Uh, every company has a different step or a different process on how they create these things. They have a backstory. Each company has a backstory. So let's say Kendall Ballistics. That's our main... Uh, Sato Forces uh, uh, arms manufacturer. They have a, a, a location that they're from and they have a certain amount of income and that dictates the style and the visual look of, of, that, of those guns. And those are the believable military guns that, that, that feel realistic and they feel like something you've seen before. When you look at something like a Fujiwara company, they're, they're way more elegant. They're, they're located in Japan. They have more money, they have more style, they have more taste, they are, they're energy-based weapons. So that alone will dictate the, the visual style of each weapon, and I think it makes it more believable, and it's something we're very passionate about. Before. Yeah, because we have ballistic weapons in this game. It's not, right. it's not laser beams, right? We're right. really talking about something that is something that you can relate to, mm -hmm. but we are trying to push things into the future. How are we doing, what, are we, what is our version of future weapons? Our, for, our, our version of future weapons is, is the same principles, the same grips, the same, the, the same way you hold them, but we, we bring that into energy style weapons. Now energy style weapons can, can fire off ballistic rounds or they can shoot uh, uh, devastating charged particles that will hit you like a, like a square, like a, like a big brick and will destroy your DNA and will rip all your molecules apart. Well, I, I think what I'm, what I'm working up to is that that each, each time we, we sort of talked about, well, what are we going to do with weapons in space? Like, what was our idea behind that? Because I know there was all these ideas like, what can we do in space? What, 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 
What are the rules? What, what can and can't we do? What, were you, what was your design process around space combat? Right, space combat would be the same as anything else. You could be a bullet. You can fire a ballistic weapon in space. Your mass is much greater than a than a bullet, so it wouldn't push you back. Nor would that 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 fine, uh, small explosion inside your your barrel. So it, it's no difference to us in in terms of the weaponry. But the great thing is we bring in new lethals. We bring in these these pieces of equipment like spider grenades and anti grav grenades and um, weapons with multiple functionality. So that's kind of how we tackle that. We can have we can have a sniper rifle that, that you flip the scope down and since it's energy based, I, we can turn that into an assault rifle. So it will switch modes. So we, we are always playing off of uh, different ways to change gameplay with those. It, you talked about variety. Um, so can you, you know, you, we've got the, the ballistic weapons, we've got the energy weapons, we've got the special grenade types. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about this variety. Why, why so many weapons? What, 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 is, you know, what is our goal with, with variety in Fun. this game? Yeah, yeah we, want, we want the player to be able to choose the way that they, like, like Dan was saying, playing uh, the jackal and you're jumping in and out of ground to space combat. There's no reason why we can't do that with gameplay. So the idea is to have as much fun as we could of using a ballistic weapon. But like with the great thing about energy weapons, you can change the gameplay up. I can see a target, you know, 60 meters, 100 meters away. As an assault rifle, he's, he's really hard to shoot. But if I flip my scope over and I change my mode on my energy-based weapon, now I have a sniper rifle and I can take that target down. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's the interaction that most of the players love about the game. Not only the way it shoots, but the fact that when I can, when I see an expert play our game and and do it with such, it's like poetry watching someone play at an expert level. And I think that you know having this variety of guns, it almost speaks to their personality. Whatever your player, how they express themselves, they'll talk about their favorite weapon. And I know you have your favorite weapon, so. Come on, Sean, you got to tell us, what is your favorite weapon in Call of Duty? Yeah, I, I absolutely love the MV4. It's Captain Reyes' gun. It's his, he has his personality oozing all over. He has a big, thick silencer on the front with a strike plate. He has a foregrip with a strobe on it. He has a top-mounted laser. He has a backup GPS display on it. He, it is his weapon tailored for him, and I kind of put a little bit of my personality into that, and that's, I think... For me, it kind of is my gun, in a way, and his gun. I well, and I that. think that, that brings it all home, right? Because really, we're talking about a character-driven story. And when we say character, it's not just in Reyes. It is in the weapons. It is in the vehicles. We really want to make this feel like a cohesive, believable future. And I just can't thank you enough for what you've done and your team has done to bring these weapons to life. With that, I want to take it over to some questions you guys have had. Last week, we asked you guys to submit your questions to hashtag IWintel. It's going to be something we're going to do on a recurring basis. So I'm going to start off with one of the first questions right here. Will most weapons be balanced? Sean, are you going to take this one? Yeah, absolutely our weapons are going to be balanced. But they are going to each feel different. You're going to get that old Modern Warfare 2 vibe where every, every gun's going to feel and sound different. But they will be balanced. But we're bringing back deeper brooding sounds for an assault rifle, but then we might have lighter fast fire rate for an SMG. So yes, they will be balanced, but they will also feel unique and feel good. Cool. Next question. Is the Jackal the only vehicle we will be able to pilot in the campaign? Dan, I think this is best for you to take. The Jackal is the only one you can directly pilot. But you also be the commander of the Retribution, where you can command the bridge, and at key points you can choose the main missions or the ship assault missions. Cool. Fantastic. Next question. How is it possible that you got this one so wrong with the fans? Where was your intel supporting this direction? This is a fantastic question. We have an extremely passionate fan base in the Call of Duty family. And we listen to every single opinion and thought you guys have about the game that we all know and love. But ultimately, this game, Infinite Warfare, has been in the making for three years. The team feels extremely passionate about bringing a new, innovative style to the franchise while retaining the DNA and components that you love about Call of Duty. All I can tell you is we've just shown you a sneak peek of things that are in the game, from a reveal trailer to E3. And in the future, you're going to see a lot more that is going to give you a better idea of what this game is all about. And we're confident that once you see more, you're going to be very excited about that direction. But thank you so much for the support over the years, and we know that in the future, you're going to be excited to play Infinite Warfare. Hope that answers your question. This is a very serious question. Hypothetically speaking, would you say if dinosaurs somehow existed in the future, would they fit <laughs> on these ships? Well, 
put this way, the Retribution, I think it can hold uh, four Ravens and 20 Jackals. So Ravens about the size of Brontosaurus, Jackal, uh, what's that, like a small T-Rex, large Velociraptor, so you can do the math. Yeah, we could, we could fit a few. I think uh, Noah would be jealous. Noah would be definitely jealous. All right, Space very good. Arc. All right, guys, that's all the time we have today. It's been great answering your questions about weapons and vehicles in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Please keep sending questions at hashtag IWintel. We're going to do more of these series in the future. Check out more information from us at San Diego Comic-Con at a COD XP later in the summer. Thanks a lot.